It's Danielle from Oasis Lactation Services, and today we're here with Dr. Hira Lavanya of One Family Pediatrics. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics and an internationally board certified lactation consultant. Hello, Dr. Lavanya, thanks for being Hello. here. Thanks for having me. Today we want to talk about some things that are really important to moms. Most moms in the United States do supplement their babies before their six, six month birthday. Um, so we want to talk about how to do that safely, if breast milk is not available, what to do, um, different types of formula, which ones you feel are the safest, best, most nutritious, and you know, obviously we always want to get breastfeeding off to a better start, so we'd love to hear some information about your practice and what you recommend to moms. So first of all, when moms come to you and say they need to supplement, what is the general recommendation on feeding things other than breast milk to a baby who will be primarily breast milk fed? Um, the best thing to uh, feed the baby is formula that is FDA approved. Okay. Um, so that could be Similac, Infamil, Good Start, um, Honest Formula, and I do like some of the more organic formulas, um, like Honest Formula does not have a lot of the GMOs and um, it doesn't have any of the corn syrup and all the things that you find in some of the more um, name brand uh, formulas. Okay, that's really good to know, because I know a lot of moms are concerned about the quality of ingredients. Um, a lot of moms ask us if it's okay to make their own formula. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us more about homemade formulas and what kinds of recipes you hear buzzing around? I usually stop listening when they say recipes, because um, making formula at home is a very dangerous thing to do. Um, formula has been around for a while, but um, when it first came out back in the early 1900s, um, when it was becoming very popular, people started realizing that babies were dying from homemade formula. Ah. Yeah, so um, babies are different than adults in that their um, kidneys and liver are still not working optimally. So um, they can't flush out the extra salts and proteins that um, is found in a lot of what we eat. And that's why they need breast milk or formula to, um, that's FDA approved um, so that they don't die of renal complications, kidney problems. So like this is why we're not supposed to give whole cow milk to small babies? Right, whole cow milk um, has a lot of casein and not enough whey. So that's a lot more protein. They also have a higher solute content. So um, this ends up poisoning babies. Um, it also can cause micro GI bleeds and cause babies to become anemic. That's pretty scary. So one of the things that's going around the internet is that cow or goat milk is more similar to human milk than cow milk. Can you explain to us why people might misunderstand goat milk as being more similar to human milk and why it's still not more similar to human milk? So goat milk is for goat made babies just like cow milk is for cow babies. Um, the only thing that goat milk is better with is it doesn't have as many of the allergens that cow milk has, but it still has um, lactose in it. It's, it actually has a higher solute content than cow milk um, and not as much fat. So it, it's just not made for babies. Um, they are trying to make a goat milk based formula, but as of now, they haven't found something that's safe for babies. Right, because I think that product's only for children over 12 months. That's right. Um, most moms don't know what renal solute load means. Could you tell us a little more about what the actual compounds are in the goat milk that's so bad for the kidneys? Uh, well, it's, um, it's the sodium chloride. So um, what happens is our kidneys normally flush out all the electrolytes like sodium, potassium, chloride. Um, it also filters out some protein and toxins. Well, in goat milk, you have high amounts of the sodium and chloride and high amounts of protein that don't get filtered through the kidneys. When that happens, you end up causing um, extra salt in your body, which causes extra water retention, um, and the extra protein makes your body more acidic. That sounds like a recipe for lots of immune compromised situations and general poor health. And failure to thrive. Okay, 
So what if mom, rather than just getting some goat milk, makes it, you know, mixes it with water and dilutes some of that salt out or adds some other ingredients? Would that then get closer to safety? Well, now you're not having enough fat in the milk. Okay. So your baby is not getting enough fat and having more failure to thrive because they're not getting the calories that they need. Sounds like this is a pretty tricky recipe to kind of work out. Well, not only that, but with formula, um, you have increased risk of getting infections. So um, breast milk is different in that it already has antibodies in it to help protect the milk from getting infected. And so you can store breast milk for longer periods of time. But even the FDA approved formulas cannot be stored after you mix in the water. Um, if you go to a hospital and the baby's receiving formula, they have to mix the water and powder in a special hooded environment so that no bacteria get into the formula. This is a pretty tricky thing to do then to formula supplement. What do you think is the easiest way that a mom can achieve optimal cleanliness hygiene when formula supplementation is medically necessary? So you definitely want to wash your hands before handling powder and, and the water that you're using to make the uh, formula. Um, you also want to make sure that the scoop that the powder comes in, you don't put that outside of the canister. Okay. Don't just leave it out. Keep it in the canister. Keep the canister stored in a dry place. Um, room temperature is fine. Um, water does not necessarily have to be boiled if you know that your tap water is safe, but you can use filtered water. It does not have to be um, distilled water. Okay. Um, and what you want to do is have one scoop of powder for every two ounces of water and use the scoop that came with the formula. Yes, don't use your house kitchen spoon or um, don't even use an actual tablespoon scooper. Just use what it came with. So you're trying to keep that powder canister as sterile as possible. Okay, and always good hand washing because we're always changing poopy diapers. Yes. Well, this is great information. Um, can you tell us anything about using human milk from another donor mother? That is perfectly fine to do. The problem is um, knowing whether or not the donor mother has any diseases. So um, you definitely want to um, go with a company that's um, that has a good reputation that um, may even process the breast milk and make sure that it's clear of any um, diseases. And medications as well? Yes, medications and even illicit drug use. That happens too. Okay, this is a lot to think about. So this is why we want to support moms from mm -hmm. birth so they can reach their exclusive breastfeeding goals. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Levine, for being with us. And you can learn more about her practice at onefamilypediatrics.com. And she also hosts Mommy Meetups. You bring the milk, we'll have the cookies. So check out her website for a complete schedule of that. And we'll also see you on Facebook at One Family Pediatrics, or you can see us at oasislactationservices.com.